Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a clip of a fat activist saying weight stigma is harming fat people's physical health. We're also going to be taking a look at several bonus clips, including one where a fat activist is responding to a comment of somebody saying, you've never lost weight before, so what would you know about it? And another bonus clip where somebody is saying, fat people deserve love, affection, friendships, etc., so be sure to stick around until the end. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. All right, we start off with the Marissa Matthews clip and she's dancing to that song. I think the apple's rotten down to the core from all the things that I bubble bubble all the apple before. Those lyrics hit me every time, dude. The caption at the top reads, Fat people's mental health are a part of their physical health. By contributing to weight stigma and harassing fat people, actually harassing fat people, you are actively harming fat people's physical health. Unlearning your fat phobia can help you not harm fat people. Try it. Oh, don't worry, I've been unlearning plenty with all the brain damage that I've received from watching fat acceptance content. Okay, okay I love this dance. Okay. <laughs> all right, dummies, you hear that? Unlearn your fat phobia. It's physically harming people. How does weight stigma hurt fat people's physical health? My opinions of this thing or that thing are hurting you physically. Okay, next. Now we're gonna be taking a look at a clip of Confident Fearless Worthy responding to this comment that reads, I'm sure you've lost weight before, but I don't believe you've ever sustained a healthy weight long term. So no, you don't know what it's like. I just wanna point something out um, and then I'm going to bed. So you have issues with me talking about a body hierarchy. Um, and yet... I don't have issues with you talking about a body hierarchy. I think it's great. I'm here for it. You have... You can just ignore the rest of these morons. They just don't get you, man. Like I do. Okay? I understand you. On a deeper level, let's go. Made a lot of assumptions about me and are trying to, uh, take jabs at me, I guess. Well, why don't you dispel the myths? Have you lost weight and sustained it long term? So you can shut this moron's comment right down? By suggesting I've never sustained a healthy weight long term, that I have the power to improve my life. <laughs> How dare they say that? They said you have the power to improve your life? Oh my god, get this jerk off your page. Whoa. Oof. Oh, that's a bad look, my guy. They banned his account immediately, right? <laughs> and I'm just not doing it. I'm well, hold on. What did he actually say? He said, nothing but projection, cope, and bitterness. Sad. You have the power to improve your life. Instead, you'd rather... And then I can't see what it says. It starts with a W. Maybe wine. Maybe wake excuses. Um... <laughs> Stop waking excuses, fool. And I'm just not doing it. I'm missing out on life's greatest joys that I should decide to treat myself better someday. And you have made- What a piece of garbage that person was for saying those things. You should decide to treat yourself better someday? What a bigot. Made those assumptions based off of watching some of my TikTok videos. The assumption that do you have the power to improve your life? The assumption that you aren't able to partake in many of life's greatest joys and adventures, and that's sad, and I wish better for you? Assumptions based off of watching some of my TikTok videos. And the only reason you're making those assumptions is because I live in a larger body. If I lived in a smaller body, you wouldn't be saying this to me, right? Um, no, they wouldn't be saying to you, I don't believe you've ever sustained a healthy weight long term if you were living in a smaller body. You're right, because that wouldn't make any damn sense, right? And so you don't think there's a body hierarchy? 
they said, I don't believe you've ever sustained a healthy weight long term. So no, you don't know what it's like. Your response is, you wouldn't say this to a thin person. You don't think there's a body hierarchy? Uh, okay, so are you gonna respond to what they said or? Really? <laughs> that she did her little slow blink thing. I love it when she makes a point that she thinks is very poignant and then she goes, And you're gonna tell me there's not a body hierarchy? Dude, stop. Stop it. Oh, and I saw the comment you made about me uh, breathing heavily in my kitchen, too. <laughs> Is that also because of the body hierarchy? Is that why we can't breathe? Let's not forget that one. <laughs> okay, and what is your retort to that? Um... You're trying, unsuccessfully, to bring me down. <laughs> is that what they're doing? To uh, make it seem like I'm sad and I'm bitter and I'm projecting. But you're not. That is not what this is. Not what this is at all. Mm-mm. Nope. Nope, Peru. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Okay. Because that would help you feel better about yourself. What the hell are you talking about? Confident, fearless, worthy? More like confident, fearless, clueless. You did not respond to what they said at all. Because you believe in the body hierarchy. So you haven't sustained a healthy weight long term then? You believe that because you once lived in a larger body than you currently do and you lost weight, that makes you better than other people who haven't. No, that means that they know what it's like to be where you are and then they also know what it's like to lose weight. You only know what it's like to be where you are right now because you've never lost weight, is their point. Pretty sure their entire comment was meant to point out that fact. Like, you don't know what you're talking about because you've never lost weight. You can't say my knees don't feel better when I lose weight because you've never lost weight. You can't say my back doesn't feel better when I lose weight because you've never lost weight. They've been where you are and they've been where they are. And they can tell you the grass is greener where they are now. I've also been larger myself and lost weight. So I've been on both sides of the fence too. It's funny how many people have never lost weight, but have all these negative opinions of weight loss and all these ideas about how it won't help you. How would you know? That makes you more virtuous. That makes you morally superior. None of this makes sense in response to that comment. That is what believing in the body hierarchy is, darling. Okay, darling. So, once again, thanks for proving my point. Okay, darling. Well, once again, I think you proved their point. Like I said, she didn't respond to that comment at all. It said, I'm sure you've lost weight before, but I don't believe you've ever sustained a healthy weight long term. So, no, you don't know what it's like. Her response... You wouldn't say this to a thin person, thus proving that the body hierarchy is real. Okay, so you haven't lost weight and sustained it long term then? So that was weird. Next, here's another Marissa Matthews clip and the caption at the top reads, Big people deserve love, affection, friendships, everything that thin people get and deserve. Our bigger bodies shouldn't be a factor in not being enough for these important life things. It's fat phobic. Good puss for sure. Ba Ew, what is this song? Ugh. All right, this is likely copyrighted, so I'm going to have to mute it. Plus, it was gross. Okay. Okay, so she deserves love, affection, friendship, etc. I think it's embarrassing to go online and tell everybody, you have to be my friend. You have to go out with me. Like, that's real embarrassing. Coming from somebody that doesn't actually really have any friends, that's a bad look. I may not have any friends, but I would never force somebody to hang out with me or pretend to like me. No, I'm just kidding. I would force people to pretend to like me. If you don't actually like me, just pretend you do, dummy. You don't have to tell me the truth. Let me live in a wonderful world of delusions. Next. Want to know my thrifting pet peeves? Yes, that's what I came here for. There are two thrift stores on my way home from work, so I'm stopping there often now. And yesterday I was there and I found this cute little shirt that's like a cutoff, but it's got finished seams. It's feeling very Dwayne The Rock and two other items. And we all know thrifting as a plus size person is an experience in itself. Well, anyway. Oh, tell me about it, girl. 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here is the thrift store, right? We're looking at the floor plan top down. Um, if this is the door and the registers are over here, um, this whole aisle is plus sizes. Okay, where's the bathroom? So it's definitely like push to the back, um, but at least I know exactly where to go and then I can just look through the plus sizes and be done, right? As I was thrifting yesterday, I was like, it is so annoying that the plus sizes just become the dumping grounds. There are so many straight size clothes in there. And then as I was thinking about it. That's weird. What's going on here? People just getting confused about where to put the clothes back or what? Well, I realize it's not the dumping grounds because who would be dumping all that cute stuff in there? Me, I'm sorry, not me. I would never dump cute stuff. It's little tiny people <laughs> like dwarfs like we got dwarfs um taking over the plus size section there's little tiny people putting clothes in the plus size section what the heck what is going on over there what do you mean by that little tiny people have you ever been referred to as small or tiny by somebody just because they were obese and they're all like calling you tiny just because you're not obese? You're like, oh, I don't know if I'm tiny. I'm just, I'm just a regular ass person. <laughs> Whatever makes you feel better. Putting their thrift finds in the plus sizes so that they don't get taken. Why wouldn't they just buy them? I'm gonna hide this here where nobody will find it in the plus size section so I can come back later and buy it. I couldn't just buy it right now. That's completely out of the question. <laughs> That's completely off the table. You know, they probably are doing that. Sometimes when I go to the thrift store, instead of just buying something that I want, I like to screw around with the store and myself, basically, and I just go hide this garment somewhere. I'm like, one day I'm gonna come back and, and buy this. I'm gonna hide it over here in the plus size section. Nobody will find it here with all the fat clothes. <laughs> God forbid I just go and buy it right now. I don't have $2 to buy a thrifted shirt today, but I will on Friday. I think you're mistaken. I don't think that's what's going on. That doesn't even make any damn sense. I think, that's my theory. That's a weird ass theory, dude. Because they're all literally such cute pieces and I don't know why they can't buy them on the spot. Exactly. Does anybody hide clothes in a store to go back and buy it later? This is literally like an episode of Seinfeld, dude. There was an episode like this. But I'm like, oh, they want to come back and find this. And they know none of us fatties are going to take it. So that's my thrifting pet peeve. What's yours? Okay, well, my pet peeve when I go thrifting is not that people are hiding clothes randomly in different parts of the store because I don't think that's happening. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I don't really have any thrifting pet peeves. I love a good thrift store, honestly. I haven't been to one in a long time. Okay, so that was weird. Why would you hide clothes in the store instead of just buying them? Especially a thrift store where everything is pretty cheap. Next. How many sugars do you have in your front of? How many sugars do I have in my fan? Oh, um, is this a trick question? I have five. You add five additional spoonfuls of sugar to your fan. Oh. Oh. Okay, so you weren't joking. Why are your eyes getting all big like you're heating up a crack pipe? I don't know. What? Dude, that is not a regular size spoon. That's an enormous spoon, dude. One, two. Each one of those is like a tablespoon. Three. Five. Wait a minute. Did you say three and then five? Did you skip four? Three. Three. Five. Five. Okay. And it's good that you're keeping an eye on that bag of sugar this whole time. Do do do. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry for that. That's that's not nice. What in the is that? I don't want to be mean, but she kind of like looks around all quick and moves all quick. 
in a similar fashion to a crackhead. I'm not trying to be mean, but like, this sugar is like crack to you, dude. Like, it's... Who the hell adds five sugars to a soda? You know there's already sugar in there, right? Like, a ton of sugar, actually. And how's it even gonna dissolve in there? The soda is cold. What the hell? So when you get to the bottom of the cup, you just have like this pile of sugar that just goes all in your mouth at once, like... No! Oh! Now you're just gonna start biting into this loaf of bread. What are you doing? Okay. Um, it's weird how you're preparing this soda and then you randomly get distracted by this loaf of bread. Like, that didn't seem staged or whatever. Like, this sugar is like deteriorating your brain, dude. Yes, too much sugar can be bad for the brain. Brain cell damage. High blood sugar can damage blood vessels in the brain, which can lead to brain cell death. This can cause problems with thinking and memory and can eventually lead to vascular dementia. Cognitive decline. A high sugar diet can lead to excess glucose in the brain, which can cause memory and cognitive deficiencies. That was random as hell and weird. Dude, oh my god. Chugging that shit. <sighs> what the f Wow. <sighs> oh my god. I'm gonna do that. Oh my god. Oh! What the hell? I didn't expect. <laughs> I did not expect it to end like that. Okay, so that was Candy, <laughs> aptly named, because she likes to add sugar to soda. How many sugars do you add to your fan? Oh, um, zero. I don't drink soda anymore, and there's already like 50 grams of sugar in there, so I don't think we need an additional 40 grams, because those weren't regular sized spoons, <laughs> those were freaking tablespoons. She comes in with like a shovel from the side, she's like, all right, let me get a scoop. <laughs> At least she didn't know how to count, though, so she actually ended up only putting four in there. So that's good. When the sugar has eroded our brain away enough, we actually start using less sugar. <laughs> Next. All right, we haven't seen from her in a minute. This is the belly dancing fat activist that always cracks me up, and she's going to be responding to this comment that reads, Would look much nicer if you lost about 60 pounds. Heart. <laughs> the looks on her face always crack me up, man. Her captions are gonna be the lyrics from this song that she's dancing to. They say, I'm just gonna sit here and rip ass on your new couch. Okay. I would like it if you didn't. <laughs> I love that move right there. Will you teach me? Teach me the art of belly dancing. But my colon don't care. But my colon don't care. It said, um. I'm ripping mad ass into the cushions. What? Okay, I don't know how much of this I'm gonna have to mute. Okay, the song that she's singing is about farting on somebody's couch repeatedly and um, how they will smell the stench for weeks. Um, I'm not sure where she got this song. <laughs> I understand you just bought it, but my colon don't care. Okay. Okay, so in response to somebody saying you'd look better if you lost 60 pounds, she sung a song about farting repeatedly on your couch. So, suck on that, haters, I guess. Next. I don't know who needs to hear this. Me. But, um, you're kind of stupid. Well, I mean, what do you want me to do? It's, you're not really offering any solutions here. <laughs> There's not much I can do about that, Marissa. IQ is genetic, you idiot. <laughs> Ah! 
If you look at someone and then assume sh about them. Any assumptions at all. Like if I assumed that perhaps your vision isn't that great, which is why you're wearing glasses, I would be a moron for that, okay? It means you have no critical thinking skills and that you lack non-judgmental skills. You lack non-judgmental skills. So I lack the ability to be non-judgmental? Okay, so that didn't make a whole lot of sense. You lack non-judgmental skills. I don't know if she was saying you lack the ability to be non-judgmental towards people, or she was trying to say you lack the ability to think critically and you don't have judgmental skills or something. So I disagree with all of the aforementioned, but what do you think? Does weight stigma harm fat people's physical health? Was that person in the comments right that Confident Fearless Worthy doesn't know what it's like to lose weight, so they have no idea what they're talking about? And how many sugars do you put in your fan- Oh, leave a comment below. Happy Friday, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.